So, Colin, you've expressed some interest in the in the Zoom chat before the show about um, SQL and database stuff. What's what's kind mm -hmm. of your interest there? What what's drawing you to that? Uh, I I just find it interesting. I I, I really couldn't put a, a pin in why I do. I, I I just find it very interesting. I've I've done a few uh, you know courses to try and grow that pure SQL knowledge, uh, but you know. I don't use it often enough to like really retain it. So I end up finding myself like uh, circle back to that thing again. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just interested. I, I, when I see people who are really good at it, I'm just always astonished. And I know Crescent's, uh, you know, pretty much wizard level. I, I think that's safe to say with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm kind of actually just curious to find out like about Crescent, like how you ended up kind of, specializing is that even safe to, to say that you kind of specialize in that area yeah i mean well so the reality is is that i went to school to be a biologist including being in a phd program that i pulled the parachute on to get out of early <laughs> but in that process um my when i went for my first job I learned systems administration. So I was deploying desktops for people and whatnot. So I had my first exposure was systems administration. So nothing having to do with programming. And I actually didn't think I liked programming all that much. I mean, I'm really a gadget guy. I like like getting the new box with a new computer or even just a printer. That was just the coolest thing to me and unpacking and plugging it in and finding all the different features and stuff. Anyway, in my evolution of the job, I did a migration. They said, hey, why don't you, we're going to put you in charge of this year 2000 project. And in the process of that, I had to learn a lot. I basically became the database administrator just because I couldn't find someone for it. So I basically leveraged my systems administration skills to say, all right, now I'm managing a database but that also gave me access to an SQL prompt and then started being able to explore the data and understand how that all interacted. So like I was writing reports and things of that nature and answering questions that people had with regard to the data. So that data exploration is kind of how I cut my teeth and got to learn SQL really well. And then it was on from that that I, only then that I kind of went into programming. So really I've come at it from a systems administrator to a database administrator to learning the data, writing SQL to then to programming. So not a lot of people have that path. So I think that's why um, like people perceive or may say, hey, you're a wizard level at <laughs> SQL. It's because, of, I mean, there's plenty of data scientists I'm sure that can whip up like window functions faster than I can, but um, yeah, but my per particular skill that I've done a lot of, spent a lot of time is performance management. So, you know. Which nowadays has become kind of the big deal for databases. Um, because, the you know, as SaaS apps go up and the everything's online now, you have to get a lot of performance through. I mean, as soon as you go part from of that... that as soon as you go multi gigabyte into the terabyte territory, if you're not accessing your data fast, you will have a slow app no matter what you do. So, cool. Um, I have another question for you. Okay. So, I know you have another, uh, like a bunch of um courses, and you have a, like a series that you of like screencasts that you put out too around the stuff. So, I have a little. It's, it, and it, trust me, it's little, it's a free little SQL bootcamp, but that's just yeah. basically for getting your feet wet. So that's, mm -hmm. that's on my website. But the other thing I do is scaling Postgres, which is a weekly show. Um, but even that is pretty in depth, but if, if people watch it, they can just get a little bit of hit of database every week to try and learn a little bit more. Cause what I do is I, look at all the content produced in a week. And I, 
I don't make it explicit for every episode, but essentially every episode I put the what I feel is the most important or the most interesting content of the week mm -hmm. is the first item. So even if you want to hang around or just look at the first link or two, you'll essentially get from me a curated best content of the week to kind of look at and understand. Gotcha. Yeah, because I was going to ask, because um, I want to check out Super Silver. I wanted to ask you, like, what you, what would you recommend as a good starting point for someone to like check out one of your courses or jump into your weekly things that you put it put out? You know, like, should I start at the boot camp? Like, if I was going to go over there, should I start with the well? Boot camp? Yeah, I mean, this the, the boot camp. I mean, it's really more of a name moniker. Moniker. Uh -huh. It's really sure. just like. I don't know if it's like 10 minutes, five or six lessons or something. Um, yeah, but the, the scaling Postgres is the weekly thing and all of it right now is free. I've, I've toyed with doing a paid course at some point, but I haven't, I'm so busy with it, other stuff going on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I time to try to do stuff like that. Sure. Carson, I was just saying, whenever you do create that paid course, you might be interested in a little product called Podia to oh, launch okay. that paid I knew course. It. I knew it. <laughs> You can talk to your boy. I'll help you out. <laughs> hey. But I am definitely going to check this out too. Post SQL in general is something that I obviously was able to avoid because I use Rails and Rails has magic keywords and they just produce things um, out of the database somehow. But recently uh, I have been trying to ex lessen that fear of just hopping into a SQL terminal and just like, all right, I need to figure this out somehow. Let's just start doing it. So uh, it's, it's, difficult but it's somewhat it's fun when it works i'll say that but when it doesn't work yeah. you, know what I think and, interests... you know if oh, go ahead. you know that's something that you could do on your own so like if you're working in the terminal in, in a rails console i should say whenever you're writing something it tells you the exact query that it's doing so if you want to get a little better learning and interpreting that you could just say hey i wrote this what is it actually sending to the database and then you right. can kind of get a sense of, and then you can just modify it. Like, no, I want to do a pluck instead of pulling back all the IDs, for example. And how does that query look different or not? So that's a way to just learn on your own, just as you're doing normal work, just say, hey, what's the SQL query doing? If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.